Hello all. Welcome to the network pen testing series at Pen Tester Academy. Now in this video, we will look at part two of the hijack DLL using function forwarding, which we've seen in the last video. Okay, so now we basically have created a DLL def file, but we need some basic DLL template code with which we can create one. So I've pretty much used the most bare bone DLL template code which we will require, uh, which just contains DLL main, right? And this default template code was picked up by what Visual Studio has created. It's pretty standard and you'll probably see it uh, almost pretty much everywhere, wherever a DLL uh, program has been written. So now let me go back and I have my DLL template. So here is my DLL template.c, the same code which we just talked about. I have my template.def. You can clearly see uh, the library in question is basically forwarding everything to user 32.real. Uh, one of the things which we need to keep in mind is the library name itself here. This is one small typo which we did needs to be user 32, which is the actual library we are creating. So you can fix this as well as the export dump.py. This would just be the DLL name. Something happened. We don't need the dot DLL from what I recall, so if we just remove it. I can go back and generate the dump again. Open up template.def and this looks good. Now let's create user32.dll with all of this information. I'm creating a 32 bit one. I'm going to use GCC. This is the Ming W version of GCC, by the way. And then we give the DLL template.c. The output would be user 32.dll and after that we basically have to say this is a shared library and we also give the template.def which the linker would use. So now if we do a file user 32.dll you would find it is a p32 dll. Fantastic. Now let's go to the Windows machine. And let me refresh this page. Here we are. And here is what I'm going to do. Let me close this one. Let me open up this user 32 with p cough. And let me go into the export address table. And there you go. You can clearly see that everything now is being forwarded to user 32 underscore real blah 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 right you might have to check out the one with the ordinals as I mentioned in the last video um, I haven't tested it with the ordinals I've tested it with the function names and the forwarding just works fine right till the time the ordinal numbers are correct which I verified that it is I don't expect a problem but just so you know I haven't tested with only ordinals Okay, fantastic. Now, let's actually go to our vulnerable program. So I have a console application here and all this does is puts out hello world. So now let's initiate a DLL hijack for this one. Now there are various ways in the real world you would probably go ahead and create, uh, you know, uh, either a dot local redirection or the application may be vulnerable. 
we've spent a lot of time on dll hijacking and how to go about it with different techniques so i would go ahead and leave that to you as an exercise so i'm going to be using the dot local redirection i've already created the folder and now let me copy the user 32.dll we've just created this is of course the fake one which has been renamed as user 32 now if i go back in here and start the app you would notice this says the procedure entry point user 32 underscore real dot message box a could not be located inside blah 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 right and this is simply because user 32 underscore real at this point does not exist in the same directory so i'm going to go inside and let me actually copy user 32 out from the system directory and let me paste it inside the same directory and now let me call this user 32 underscore real now I can go back in here, run the app, and there you go. Hello world works perfectly, right? Now, just so we know that definitely both the DLLs have been loaded. Once we run this application, let me actually go and run the sys internals tool suite as well. Let's run process explorer, and let's look at all the loaded DLLs. So here is console application 2. If I select that, I can see a lot of these loaded modules. And here you go. If you scroll down, you'll actually see that user32.dll and user32 underscore real.dll. Both of these have been loaded by the application. Fantastic, right? So this is how we can actually create a proxy DLL and go about hijacking the functionality, right? Now you could pretty much even write a little API spy, which you know looks at uh, what data the application is sending, the API you have hooked in this way, logs something and then forwards it to the real one. There are a lot of interesting things which can be done from this point. But from our perspective, all I would want to do is have my DLL get invoked and so that I can do interesting things in DLL main. And for everything else, let the real DLL take care of it so that there is no loss of functionality. So you've seen how we are able to do this in the next video we will see how we can get Metapreter using this technique. I'm sure something everyone has been waiting for. So that's all for this video. If you're enjoying your time at Pentester Academy, then please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.